Hello there. I never know how to start these videos, but hi, I'm Sophia Metropolis. I'm an artist. This video is gonna be a super chill draw with me session. There's not really much to it today. We're just gonna be using some Posca markers and having a little sketchbook time. I have this sketchbook that I actually just customized the cover of, so if you haven't seen that, you can go watch that video up there. But I am this far into it and I have this far to go, and I want to try to finish it by the end of the year. I want to finish it by the end of 2020. I don't know why I want to do that, but I just feel like it's a goal that I should have, and I think there's like 13 weeks left in the year, something like that. It's a lot of pages, but part of this goal is because a lot of what I've been doing recently has been making art for YouTube, which I really enjoy, but I haven't really been making art outside of YouTube, which is like, before YouTube, I wasn't really making art outside of YouTube because I was like in a rut. So the good news is that YouTube is making me make art again, and I love that, but I also want to make more art on top of that. You know what I'm saying? So it's like 10 o'clock at night, and I haven't drawn yet today, so I'm just going to do some Posca marker drawings. I was going to say like, won't you join me? But then I was like, what's the Mr. Rogers line? It's like, won't you be my neighbor? Anyway. If you want to draw with me, um, that's cool. If you want to just watch me draw, that's cool too. We're just gonna draw. Ready, set, here we go. You can't see the cover anymore, but this is an five and a half by eight and a half Canson mixed media paper. I'm just gonna wing it, honestly. I don't really know. I don't have a plan, but these greens, these greens are calling my name. So I'm gonna start with some greens and maybe just some leaves. Something that I used to do in college when I was taking a lot of art classes, something that we would do obviously in our drawing classes was warm-up sketches. And like a lot of times in a warm-up sketch that usually means a gesture drawing, especially if you're taking, what's the class I'm thinking about? Anatomy drawing or life drawing or anything like that. There's a lot of like gestural warm-up work. And I think that's something that I sort of fell out of practice of in my own personal work. I kind of just try to dive in and expect things to be good right off the bat, and they're often not. So I'm trying to just loosen up. And uh, sometimes that means just like making shapes and sometimes making them ugly. And also sometimes what happens in those situations is you make something you end up finding really impressive or you know you end up making the breakthroughs. I guess this is going to be kind of like an insightful chatty draw with me because I have some thoughts that I want to talk through right now. I never know if people want like silence. Do people want to watch silent drawing videos or do you want to hear me talking and hear my thoughts? Let me know in the comments what kind of video you prefer. For me personally, I like to hear people's thoughts, but sometimes that's voiceover, sometimes it's live action. I don't know. But the point that I was going to make earlier was there is a really beautiful set of rules written by Sister Coretta Kent that's pretty iconic in many art school settings, and it's called the Immaculate Heart College Art Department Rules. I used to have it hanging up in my studio, and then when I moved, I didn't have it, but I actually just hung it up again today. But the line that I'm particularly thinking about in this moment is in Rule 7, and she says, the only rule is work. If you work, it will lead to something. It's the people who do all of the work all the time who eventually catch on to things. And I think it's important to not take that out of context and start thinking about like capitalism work and like that kind of work, but really only apply it to creative expression. And for me, what that tends to look like is if you draw every day, you might not have any good ideas, right? You might just be making ridiculous plants out of your head, like I am in this setting. But, you know, 15 days could go by and I might not have any good ideas, but the one day that you do have a good idea, if you've been drawing for the past 15 days or whatever the number is, you know, you'll be so much more prepared to execute those drawings or that idea if you've been practicing, as opposed to if you've just been slacking off in your creative practice. It gets a lot harder to express the ideas when they do come, if you haven't been like appropriately training. And you know, I come from a really athletic background. I was a competitive weightlifter for six years, so it was really easy for me to dedicate my life to that kind of training. But, you know, I think people don't really think of creative expression as the same kind of practice, you know, and it, it is in many ways a muscle just like any other, and that to get better, you really do just have to practice. And you can see there's so many videos of people just what my drawing looked like when after drawing six months in a row or a year in a row or whatever it is. There's a lot that you can achieve with consistency alone. And I think also a lot of times we kind of tell ourselves like, oh, well, I don't have that, you know, natural talent so it's hard for me to be that good. 
but I'm an adult, you know, I'm 25 years old. And the people that are good at drawing when you're a teenager, like, yes, I started also pumping my pens on the back and now I'm making this like trippy page of like this kind of squishy art. But so I'm a 25 year old and at this point in my life, like yes, when I was like nine or 10 or 15 or whatever, there was the separation of talent in the art world in me versus my peers, right? But at this point, the only 25 year olds or whatever be and beyond that are good at creative expression are the ones that practice. It's not the same as when you're in school and you are just naturally good because eventually like if you stop practicing, you stop being naturally good. Like yes, there are principles that you can learn that you can carry on throughout, but it's that cliche line where it's like hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. But it is true and especially like the older you get the more it starts to apply for me personally this i feel like was a big lesson for me you know how you sometimes you have those moments where you're like ah oh, yes this is the meaning of life or not like the meaning of life but this is like the biggest thing that i've learned and for me it's that you are literally never too old to learn how to do something there's just no such thing as being too old to learn how to do something and i hope that that's something that i remember throughout my life because it's been a really transformative experience for me to kind of come into that power and to realize that that is the truth and that everybody that starts something starts as a beginner. And you can get good at nearly anything, nearly anything, as long as you practice. You wanna be an amazing runner? Just run a ton. I mean, obviously there's, there is an element of genetics in athletics and there is an element of taste in art making and I won't deny that, but you can improve your skill level on anything just by practicing. So anyway. I kind of just want to like have that be the lesson of this video and have this fact that I'm drawing be the side info and like these drawings don't really matter for this video. Like I kind of started this video thinking like, oh, I'll just do some drawings and they'll be good or they'll be okay enough that it'll be a good video. But actually I feel like I've said some more meaningful things that kind of matter more than these shitty plant drawings to be honest. So I don't know. What kind of plant should I draw? I don't even know. What kind of plants are there? I feel like there's gotta be other plant life. Come on. I don't even know. Like what do plants look like? I lost my train of thought because I got distracted by the fact that I couldn't think of any plants. The point is just practice. I don't know. I'm just, I think I am going to put this video up just with these not great drawings and just with my thoughts instead. And um, I hope that you'll meet me at the point of the quality of my words and not the quality of my drawings and understand that, I don't know, everything you make doesn't have to be perfect and that's okay. And you don't have to like everything you make. Sometimes, okay, I, I tweeted this once a long time ago on my old Twitter account, which I don't use anymore. But if you want to follow me on Twitter, my Twitter is in the description. I feel like I'm not as funny as I used to be on Twitter, but whatever, if you want to be there for when I am funny again, you can follow me. The point is I tweeted on my old Twitter account saying that some days you go months where you have no ideas right like months can go by where you're just like i've literally haven't thought of a single creative expression in like any given day at all this entire time and i'm really sad by that but then some days happen and you get like honestly six ideas in one day and that is the best feeling especially when you've been practicing regardless and you're able to render those ideas like that is so satisfying because that's the whole name of the game. Not every piece of art is gonna be just fantastic and beautiful and genius. And sometimes they're just goofy plants. And, and that's okay because today they're goofy plants, but maybe another day it's gonna be a big breakthrough moment where not only am I like, oh yes, I solved this one problem, but also I solved these 15 other problems all at the same time. And that's a great feeling. With that, what's across from green on the color wheel? I keep this color wheel on my phone because I reference it all the time. So I just wanna say like, color theory is forever, okay? It's forever. I'm thinking about making a color theory video. So let me know in the comments also if you wanna see that because I feel like I honestly, as much as I love it and as much as I'm into it, I still don't feel like I have it figured out. So I wanna do some research and learn more. Anyway. I really like opposite colors, whichever the word, it's like analogous or I don't know what the heck. So usually with green, I'll do pink, honestly, but I'm kind of thinking maybe purple. I'm trying to work outside of my comfort zone a little bit. This purple maybe, but usually also I would do this pink. Like this feels like more my personal aesthetic. This feels like a deviation from that. So I'm not gonna do that, to be honest. <laughs> Listen, a girl's got a type, okay? Anyway, those are just kind of the main things that have been on my mind. So you know what, here's what I'll say. Oh, jeez. If you're at a point where, I think a lot of us are at this point. I was, I've been watching Lee Ellickson's video and she was even talking about this too, 
where she feels like she's kind of just making art for work and not really for fun, which I don't feel that much because I, you know, YouTube isn't really my job at this point. It's mostly just because I enjoy it and I'd like it to be my job because I enjoy it and because I get to do the things I really enjoy, which are make art and make videos, even though I've had like a tumultuous relationship with video making in the past, but it really has been a part of my life for a very long time. So I'm excited to have it back in my life. The point is, if you are at the point where you haven't been making art and you maybe just like aren't in the mood to make art and you feel like you don't have any ideas, you should just make some bad art, you know? And you should just like, let it be bad. I don't know. I feel like that's the best piece of advice that I've gotten recently. It's just like, don't worry about it if it's ugly. That's okay. You'll make good art eventually. So don't be stressed when like, like this one piece is just not impressive. I bet you didn't expect this insightful conversation when you came into this video and you saw the thumbnail. Actually, I don't know. Maybe I'll make the thumbnail something that makes you really, really want to know. I'm not very good at those clickbaity things. I feel like my thumbnails are always really straightforward or my descriptions. What is it called? What's the word I'm looking for? Titles. My titles are really straightforward. Anyway, whatever. I'm going to put some just patterns. Ooh, that kind of picked up the green. I kind of love that. That's a little serendipity moment, to be honest. Another thing I've been thinking about is making patterns. I feel like it seems like something that would be a lot of fun. So I'm thinking about making a video on that. If you're interested in that kind of thing, it would definitely be exploratory. It wouldn't really be instructional because honestly, I personally enjoy exploratory videos, mostly because I really enjoy exploring. And while I don't think they're necessarily as beneficial to the public as an instructional video might be, I feel like, I don't know, I'm trying to like be true to myself with this channel and make things that excite me. And right now, things that I'm excited about are trying new mediums and like trying to figure out what it is I'm interested in. The other thing I was going to say is, so I am postgraduate. I have my bachelor's degree, which I probably have already linked my video about my art school story up in the cards. So you should just check the little description thing on the side. And if you want to know more about my story of art school and how I went from film school to art school, you can watch that video. It was kind of a wild ride. So if you just want to know a little bit more about me. That can be found in there. But the point is, something that I have always really wanted to do is go to grad school for art. But something that they really stressed in my art school was that you should wait to go to grad school and that you should really try and explore as much as possible in your creative field before diving into an MFA because it's a terminal degree. There is nothing higher than that in the world of art. So you want to really like savor it. And in true transparency, one of my biggest goals with this YouTube channel is to be able to have this help support me at some point to go to grad school. I think that would be so much fun and like such a nice roundabout way of my art kind of turning back into my education and myself because I do, I think, you know, I don't think everybody has to go to college, but I really enjoyed college and I especially enjoyed the art school portion of my liberal arts experience. So I'm looking forward to the potential to expand on that and I want to savor it and make sure that I'm ready for it as much as possible. So I feel like this YouTube channel is like a good way for me to kind of work through some ideas. Anyway, the point is, sorry I'm all over the place, but the point is that something that they look for in art school, in a master's program, from what I've been told at least, so if you have a master's degree in fine art, please let me know below if you disagree or if you have different insights, I'd love to hear. The point is, something that I've heard in the grapevine that is valued in that application process is finding a new body of work outside of college after your undergraduate degree, which I'm not sure I have fully tapped into yet for me personally. During school and after school, I was making a lot of work about being a female athlete and specifically a woman strength athlete and I that work kind of turned into commercial work and I had a store that I ran and I enjoyed that but I also feel like I kind of deviated from my fine art expression so for the past like year and change I've been really trying to figure out what direction I want to go in in my creative practice in seeking thematic unity in my work. I'm holding this page up by the way because of that wet splotch under there just so you know because I might want to dip back into it as a well but I feel like the pen is kind of ready to go at this point so but some things that I have found are definitely nature like I'm definitely more inspired by nature these days and like my own experiences with consciousness and kind of mind expanding practices, I guess you could say. I kind of like that. I kind of want to stop there. Anyway, all right, I guess I'll squish that down. So that's it for this whack-ass drawing. <laughs>
This definitely wasn't my typical video. It was a lot more chatty than I usually, well, I don't know. I, I usually am chatty, but it was more about like kind of just my thoughts than typical. Usually I'm pretty focused on the task and I feel like this drawing was actually kind of me working through those ideas, which I try to do. And I've been finding recently that even though I haven't been kind of going to my sketchbook as much as I really want to be, something that I have been doing is trying to dry out my feelings. So when I'm going through a really intense kind of emotional moment, whether it's a low or a high, I'm trying to just draw that out and try to not come at it with an expectation of what it is I'm gonna draw and kind of just draw what happens. And what I've been finding is that because my technical skill has grown so much over the past couple years, I'm having a lot easier of a time drawing things that I didn't even know I had in my head, I guess. And that's something that my sculpture professor, Jed Fine, my favorite, love you Judd, at USC, he said something where he would talk about our sculpture pieces and he said, you'll never be able to draw what you're going to make completely accurately because what you're going to make, you, you'll never be able to think of it until you make it is the kind of thing. I mean, obviously we were talking about renderings in 3D, you know, sculpture, but I think that applies to drawing as well. Like you won't be able to conceptualize fully the quality or the you know, the meaningfulness of the work you're about to make until you actually make it. And more often than not, it will so far surpass and blow out your perception of what it's going to be. You know what I'm saying? Does that make sense? Anyway, this was sort of a insightful video experience. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know if you want to see more content like this. And if you did enjoy it, please give this video a like, subscribe to my channel, but most importantly, no pressure, but if you want to support me on Patreon, you can. I just started a Patreon recently, which I made a video all about starting that, so you can watch that also. And my Patreon is linked in the description below. Right now, I only have two tiers, one where you can see posts and vote on polls and stuff like that. And the other one, which is just a couple dollars more, you can see all that stuff and join a Discord channel. And I put out a monthly video, which I haven't done yet for September because I literally started it like less than 10 days ago. But September's might be a little slacking, but the ones going forward will be baller. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Sophia Metropolis. Thanks for stopping by my channel today. Especially if you've made it this far in the video, you seem like a cool ass person. I don't want to curse at you. You seem like a really cool person and you should hang out with me more. <laughs> Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.